is a UI table of customer orders, and it's backed by Firebase and SQL. That's right, Firebase has SQL. You can imagine what a general server-side SQL query for this table would look like. Select the columns from a table, join with other tables, and specify the where statement criteria. But this is on the server. How do you think a Firebase service would allow you to write this query from the client? Well, let's think dream world scenario for just a second. Why can't Firebase just generate a get orders function for me? Well, this right here, it isn't pseudocode or some fake library. This is real code from Firebase Data Connect. Data Connect is our latest backend solution for building mobile, web, and AI applications with type safe SDKs from Cloud SQL, a PostgreSQL database with flexible queries, extensions, and scalability. And that's not all. Data Connect is built for AI development with features such as vector search and function calling definitions. Data Connect generates tool definitions, which can be consumed by GenKit, making it easy for you to call your own database queries and update operations from natural language prompts. And Firebase Data Connect isn't just a new SQL system. We reimagined Firebase development from the ground up, and we think that we've built the next generation of Firebase. So how is something like this even possible? And yes, in JavaScript, you can configure the package name. How does Firebase know what to generate? We built Data Connect on a single principle that we believe will dramatically speed up application development. You write a query, we do the rest. With one query, Data Connect will generate an API endpoint, an authentication and authorization policy for this endpoint, strongly typed client code for web, iOS, or Android, and tool definitions for Gen AI workflows. I'm going to take you through not only through what Data Connect is with lots of demos and examples, but I'm also going to show you why. So how is this different from Firebase as you know it? When you're building an app with a SQL-based system, there are three main areas where you'll be writing code. The data model, client libraries, and authorization. You need code to create tables, code to retrieve and update data, and code to secure access. Now, the traditional approach that you would expect from a Firebase SDK would probably look something like this. You start by importing this hypothetical library. You can specify what table and the type is of that table. There's a join method for related tables and query methods for query criteria. But there's a lot of problems here. First, this SDK, it's not type safe. There are so many strings referencing structures that can and probably will change. The code that creates this database table is out of sync with this query, meaning that any changes to the database structure will require a manual update in the app code. Next, if you're building a cross-platform app, you might have to write this query multiple times in multiple languages. Lastly, think about security. Since this query is written on the client, there has to be a security policy somewhere that limits the access to this data on the server. Since SQL databases are designed for normalized data, not only each row, but each column of a table might have differing acceptable access patterns. And this becomes even more difficult when the client application running in an untrusted environment can send arbitrary queries to the database. The backend doesn't know what kind of queries to anticipate, so you, the developer, have to write out well thought out security policies to prevent any abuse or unwanted access. So even though all your data model, client libraries, and authentication are related, they aren't all in sync. Here at Firebase, we asked one big question. What if all three of these areas could be driven by a single declarative source? What if you could write some simple objects that represent your database schema? And also a declarative query language where you can specify your queries up front instead of ad hoc where every query and update operation can have a security policy mapped to it. And since queries are predefined, their client code can be generated from multiple platforms in a type-safe manner. Whenever any data structure changes happen, the client libraries stay right in sync. This approach combines your data model, queries, and authentication in one place. And we call this approach Query Defined Infrastructure, or QDI. Query-defined infrastructure is written like front-end code, but can be reasoned about like trusted server code. You have full control over which operations can be performed by a client application, and each operation defines its own parameters and returned data. In other words, you write the queries, we do the rest. Let's dive into a real Data Connect project to see it in action. 
In Firebase Data Connect, data modeling queries and update operations are modeled with GraphQL. Your GraphQL code is then generated into Android, iOS, and JavaScript libraries. To rapidly test and iterate over your data model and queries, Data Connect comes with a VS Code extension where you can click to run a local Data Connect emulator, test queries, provide variables, and mock authentication. By default, we organize your code into three main files, schema, queries, and mutations. Your database schema is declared with GraphQL types. When you create GraphQL types, you create database tables. Each field of a type represents a column. And when a field is an object type, like customer on order, it creates a relationship. In this case, there is a one-to-many relationship because there is one customer, but many orders. You can also customize each table and their columns by using both the at table and at call directives. And in this case, I want to specify that UID is the primary key. And by default, if you don't specify the primary key in the table directive, Data Connect will automatically create an ID field for you behind the scenes that is of a UUID type. Now, to create a query, I can start by giving a query a name, then query for orders. Inside of orders, I have access to each field where I can choose which fields are included in my query. We also built our own language server to provide you with type ahead hints. When I get to a field with an object type, such as customer, it acts as a join, making it easy to connect related data pieces together. I need to set query criteria that restricts this query to totals between a minimum and a maximum total and users from a specific state. I can start by giving the query a set of variables for min, max, and state. Then I can set a WHERE clause on orders to use query operators such as equal to, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. There is an entire set of query operators for you to use, like CONTAINS, which translates to a LIKE in SQL. For relational objects, you can even nest into their fields to use query operators. You can also provide a limit number as well as an ORDER BY clause. This query is also protected with the AUTH directive. Only authenticated users can access this query. To make security easier, we have built in common authorization policies like user in this case. If you're familiar with security roles, this is similar to checking the request UID to the currently authenticated user. While in local development, if you're unsure of what you need for your current policy, you can set the level to public, but make sure to change that before you get to production. Queries can be executed within VS Code with this Code Lens button above each query. This pops up the execution panel, which allows you to mock authentication, see execution history, and execution results. I currently don't have any data, so let's change that. GraphQL has a concept of mutations, which allows you to define data changes. With Data Connect, you can also specify the security policy to limit who has access to this operation. To make authoring mutations easier, we provide a set of automatic mutation fields that are mapped to the most common set of update operations in a database. There are many more operations, such as update, delete, update many, and delete many. You can also use server values to set the UID to the currently authenticated user. To test this mutation, I'm going to use the arguments panel to fill out some values and then click Run on the mutation, which shows us a successful insert into the database. So now, when I execute the get users query, I can see the record. But I still have a problem. My query returns pizza orders, and there are no toppings in my query results. To model toppings on an order, I'm going to create a reference table for the toppings and a join table called order toppings that stores the order and the topping added to that order. Since these are the only two columns on the table, I can create a composite index to use their IDs as the primary key. Again, to speed up this process, I'm going to run a little script to insert some data. In Firebase Data Connect, we provide automatic joining fields for relationships between tables. You only have to write one side of the relationship and will provide fields for the other direction. This is done with a field that follows the format of key via table. And in this case, topping via order topping. Now, as much as I love the automatic joining field, I don't want to use this key in the data structure in my app. So I'm going to use an alias to rename it to toppings. 
As I make these changes, Data Connect will continue to generate the SDK and make sure that the type returned from the query and the variables are always up to date. I get full type information about every aspect of this query. I can see the type it returns. I can see the types of the arguments it accepts. I can even use this query for types in my UI. In this Next.js app, I'm using the indexing syntax and TypeScript to assign the prop types of the component to individual types of the query result. And just because I know you're wondering how I have my own package name, Data Connect allows you to configure the output destination of your generated SDK. And for the web, you can specify the name of your package. Once it's generated, all you have to do is install it into your app using a local NPM install. Now, I want to see all of my database changes in production. I can deploy my schema either using the VS Code extension or the Firebase CLI. Now, this deployment didn't run because I have an existing schema that I've deployed before, and the CLI informs me that I have to run a migration first. This migration tells me all the changes that have occurred and allows me to accept all changes. After that, I can deploy again and then view my schema in the Firebase console. In the Firebase console, you can use the Playground and our query editor to quickly insert data and write queries. You can also inspect your deployed schema, view keys, and any relationships. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking right now. GraphQL? Oh no. Isn't that hard to secure? Can a user just query anything? What about n plus one complex queries? I don't want to write resolvers. Do I have to learn a whole new language? What about field level security? Don't worry. First, Data Connect generates efficient SQL query joins instead of multiple database queries. Second, you can still write SQL in the form of SQL views. In this example, I've created a view that gets the count of total orders and their average total. It's embedded within a GraphQL type because it allows you to still have type safety for SDK generation. And since this is encapsulated in a type, I can use the SQL view in an existing query to avoid excess API calls. And lastly, Data Connect is not a typical GraphQL service. It's a service that uses GraphQL. Well, what's the difference here? Well, a traditional GraphQL API exposes a relational schema for developers to query for the data they need in one request. Instead of needing to call multiple REST API endpoints, you can craft whatever query you need to get your data back. And this is great. Querying in GraphQL is terse, type safe, and designed to work with related objects. However, managing a GraphQL API in terms of security, complexity, and what a user can access can be incredibly difficult. And resolving data from an underlying data source to your GraphQL schema can also be difficult to keep in sync across changes. These are not problems in Data Connect, because Firebase Data Connect handles the synchronization and resolving of GraphQL schema to database schema. But the most important distinction is that Data Connect is not an open GraphQL API for developers to query. Think of Data Connect like a private GraphQL API for you, the developer, building your app. The only queries that client applications can call are the ones that you create yourself ahead of time, which means there are no overly complex or surprise queries that can be run by a random client. One of the core aspects of Data Connect is AI development. Data Connect currently has support for vector similarity search and generated tooling definitions to work with function calling. In Data Connect, you can use a vector type on a field to store LLM embeddings. And to make computing embeddings easier, we provide configuration for computing embeddings during mutations. In this example, I'm using an automatic mutation field to insert a content record. But I'm specifying what field to generate an embedding for and which embedding model. If you're running this locally, we generate a fake embedding. But in production, this operation calls out to Vertex AI to generate and then store the embeddings for you. Then I can create a query to see the embedding types. Each embedding is a long and complex array, but using vector search, we can query for items based on similarity. This example takes in a string to compare against and a number to limit the results. Again, you can provide the embedding model and the text to compare against. You can also specify the method from L2, cosine, and inner product. Another AI feature that we designed specifically for Data Connect is function calling definition generation between GenKit and other LLMs. Function calling allows you to pass context about what functions in your code are available for an LLM to call based on the context of a prompt. 
In Data Connect, all queries and mutations are predefined. So we can not only generate your client SDK, but we can also generate the definitions that allow LLMs to know how to call your operations from a prompt workflow. This is referred to as tools definition in GenKit. This tools definition file is a JSON file that shows the structure of your queries and mutations. Commenting your query names and variables provides more context for the LLM to use when deciding which operation to call. In this example, I'm passing the generated tools definitions to GenKit and giving it a natural language prompt that would match the context of the listed query in the tools. This allows you to build agent-like flows in your apps without having to build all the boilerplate steps in between. Just write your queries and point the tooling definitions at GenKit. Data Connect is brand new, and there's still so much it can do today that I didn't have time to cover. We wanted to give you an early sneak peek so you can give it a try and give us feedback. Data Connect is currently in gated preview where we'll be rolling out invites over time. So make sure to sign up using the link in the description. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment. We are so excited for you to try out Firebase Data Connect. We truly believe it'll allow you to rapidly model data structure, build type safe apps with AI features securely and at scale. Oh,